The new Atlas trailer just launched a little while ago, and with this, we got to see a ton of new gameplay, features, mechanics, and creatures coming to the game, along with confirmed dinosaurs to some extent. Now, if you don't know, Atlas was created by a game studio called Grapeshot Games. Grapeshot Games is a, I guess, combination of past ARC developers and new hires that they brought in for the project along with some higher-ups at Studio Wildcard who created ARC Survival Evolved and all of the expansions for that game. Now, unfortunately, Atlas was delayed until the 21st of December, and hopefully you're watching this after the 21st and you're already playing the game and enjoying it because it does look like a really good game. However, there were a lot of things that people missed in this trailer that we're going to be looking at right now, and I just want to make a really quick note here. Upon Atlas being delayed, I noticed in the Atlas Discord server, people were going crazy, and it was to a point where Discord was locking up on my computer. Since Atlas was delayed and the timer they had put up was not consistent with the release of the game as they were promised, people have begun rioting and doxing the Studio Wildcard developers, the CEO, so on and so forth, and posting their public information. Alongside the uproar for this highly anticipated game, people have begun showing some racial tendencies and posting some less than favorable things in the Atlas Discord server. I don't usually weigh in with my own personal thoughts when it comes to these things, but in this case, I think it's necessary because some people need to grow up. Atlas as a game was delayed by two days. The timer that they had anticipated just did not come in line with their development goals. They were unable to give us the product, so we can't really do much about that, and they can't either. All they can do is continue working on development. To go out of your way and dox the developers, or otherwise try to bring racial motivation into this, is completely and totally uncalled for. Between the doxing and attacks on the personal lives of the people working on Atlas, it's just... We, here's the mentality, I don't understand. There's such a rich entitlement factor going into this. People seem to think they are owed something right now for Atlas because a fancy little timer was displayed on a website for people to see and they said, hey, so we hope to have this game out at this date for you to enjoy. We haven't paid anything up front. You haven't paid anything up front. No one has paid anything up front. We haven't paid for early access or a promised release date. No one is out of any money their pocket they're not benefiting anything if anything delaying this game wildcard is seeing more money out of their pocket with no return they're delaying what could be millions of dollars of generated revenue for the sake of creating a quality product for us they could have released right now despite whatever issues they may have been facing but they cared more about a product that would work better and we would enjoy more in ensuring that it is a less buggy experience if you're one of the people currently attacking Wildcard or Grapeshot or doxing them, releasing their personal information, their friends, families, all that stuff, or trying to impact their personal lives in a negative way, the only thing I can really say is you are a child if you do this with the sense of entitlement that's following behind this game. With that out of the way, I'm going to play the Atlas trailer for you guys to watch in case you haven't seen it yet, and then we're going to move into a more in-depth analysis of this trailer and see all of the hidden goodies that you may not have seen the first time around or may not have seen unless you slowed the video down.
So that was the Atlas trailer. Obviously, a lot to take in. You'd have to watch that numerous times to really pick up on a lot of stuff that was happening. However, luckily for you and me, I'm willing to waste my time here today and do this. So, so let's go ahead. Let's watch the Atlas trailer at a slower speed so we can really digest what's happening in these scenes. I'll be pausing them and stuff like that too as time goes on. So looking through this, we can see people are being hung right here at some gallows. And then we also have this guy right here who was obviously left up. No one really wanted to mess with him, but he's a skeleton nonetheless. Some of the armor variations here are really nice as well. And some of the clothes that you can have character customization as well going to have some really nice perks now i want to make it you know what no, i'm going to make the point later on you can see right here there's an anvil some kind of blacksmith workshop maybe inside that building right there actually where you purchase any various metallurgy things related eggs we have an ostrich right here as well i'll we'll just continue on from there that's one of the new creatures i believe we have this thing right here which looks like it might be a, a deodon i think that's been remodeled and reworked to look like a new creature even though they might use the same animations though i doubt it will heal you i hope i got that right also there's a snake following this chick right here and that's actually kind of cool because i just noticed that super weird see right here there's almost a skull like island here some waterfalls going down so on and so forth the crowd really isn't doing much but you see right here people working on some food i believe or Maybe they're trading fish, so maybe fishing is a feature in the game. Continuing on, we see up right here, there's a parrot coming into the frame. The parrot may actually be a nod towards there being parrots and pets that can be on your shoulder later, because in this trailer, I actually see this. Now, horses obviously have saddles. They actually have saddles like the Equus in our currently, and we may be able to store things inside these saddles as well or even the creatures. We see someone working on some stuff right here, or possibly trading between two right here. And that's basically that, some cooking right here as well. Continuing on, we can see this new creature right here as well, which was hidden behind the horse, and it only stays here for a couple frames. Um, I don't know what it would be. It looks like a, a, a I, don't, I don't know, I want to say a bison or a buffalo. It's, it's something serious though, I know that, and it's out of the way. So you wouldn't really notice it. There's two of them actually. Uh, this is a Christmas event. I'm not sure why this is here. I don't know why this guy is in the frame either. I don't really understand that. There's penguins too, but we'll continue on and we'll go with it. I also saw a polar bear right there. Just then a snout of it. Oh, we had a wolf over there too, if you didn't see that. We have a giraffe or a giraffe looking creature. An old school raft from Ark as well, which was probably just ported over right away. Going near some rafts, we have a full functioning elephant here as well. All in all, they're just dancing around a fire. Now you can see right here, there's another monkey right here. Seems like they've been domesticated. There's also a carriage right here you would put on the back of a horse and some people sitting at a table out in the middle of the street. Doesn't really seem productive. A lot of chests here too. I feel like these might be accessible and not just there for looks. I also like that this person has dual swords, which is also super cool. And we've got some kegs right here on a horse with a carriage. Again, moving on. We can see they are in a rowboat, and there is a lighthouse over there. That's kind of cool, too. And we've got a giant statue. We've got some boats. However, this is a much smaller one compared to this one. Probably a full-fledged galleon here. Lots of cannon ports as well. What I want to do personally in this game, get a giant ship with as many cannons as I possibly can, come right up next to a giant ship around my size, and broadside the hell out of it with every cannon firing at once, which would be amazing. Moving on. We can see these guys right here. We don't know, actually, if these are player characters or if these are NPCs. We can have NPC crews in Atlas, full NPC crews. I don't know if we can decide what armor and weapons they get, though I do know we can decide what tasks they perform on the ships as we go. So you don't really need to play with players. You can play quote-unquote single player and have AI help you out, though I would doubt it's going to be as effective as players. Then you're going to move on. They use animations and stuff. This chick is here as well. Some really nice armor and a steering wheel for the ship. You can see a giant rogue wave right here. Another statue. Another light. Actually, this is the same lighthouse we saw before right there. You can see the waves as well seem to have some kind of displacement when it comes to coming in contact with the boat. Almost like the boat actually has some serious weight displacement. Continuing on, I don't really see too much. Actually, right here was kind of buggy. You see the horse right here? It jumps into the other ship. I don't like that they included that. But anyways, that jumps in there. You see the cannons firing. It rammed the bigger ship, which wasn't a good decision in my opinion. And then he can actually cascade down using some rope. This guy gets shot. And all of the pirates are fighting amongst each other. Now, this may be an AI battle. This might not actually be other players. This might just be a single player. Right here, we can see this guy is using a parrot or girl. I can't really tell. This guy has an accordion for some music. 
And this guy over right here has a monkey on his shoulder. The ship is a little bit smaller, no real cannons that I can see. This may be more of a travel vessel or cargo vessel. I also see the moon up right there, so there will be a day-night cycle. Hopefully, it looks just as good as Ark. And there's actually a chick right here walking up the, or climbing up the ladder. However, something weird happens. This guy actually throws this out, and that's a huge bait for the fishing rod. Unless, maybe that's just how it is in Ark. I haven't fished in Ark, so whatever. You see the horses running up here with a carriage down there. They're all raiding this city. Don't know if this is all going to be custom or not, but at some point, we'll find out, obviously. And then we have tornadoes in the middle of the sea with this demonic-looking ship which is super cool as well. It reminds me of Sea of Thieves, except Sea of Thieves done right. You see, this is the type of thing I want to have, a, a cannon fortress just opening up. Now, one thing I want to make note of right here is the cannons are all there, you know, firing with the war drums, got people set up. But these ones right here fire differently. They fire straight up. See that? Right there. That was a little bit different compared to what we see. And over here, there's something in the sky. I don't know, I don't know exactly what that is. I think that might be a pteranodon. Maybe just a bird. I do know there's a Pteranodon, though. I can guarantee you that. In fact, that gets hit. Destruction looks pretty consistent. You got rowboats you can put down and raid other people's fortresses, which is also really cool. Now, there are different uh, turret variations, too. I know that. Moving into this more. Broke the gate. These guys are dead. They charge in. And then we have fire elementals. I'm not really I'm not really that interested in this, to be honest with you, when it comes to mythology and stuff like that. Like, we have a rock elemental over here and then a fire one. I'm not really too interested in that stuff. I'd rather just the flat out pirate on pirate stuff and that fighting stuff. Yeah. Also, weird blue things. X marks the spot, so we'll be using maps, obviously, to navigate around. This guy actually had a shovel on his back, or a shield on his back. I just noticed that with a sword. There's our loot right there. And then these guys are going in to attack some skeleton warriors. There's a giant hydra right here. I didn't really see too much in this scene that was interesting. They had some cannons there to try and fight it. Um, a giant thing right here. I, I think it's going to take a lot more than just this to take this Hydra on, to be honest with you, because it looks like it's one of the boss creatures. Yeah. We have a nasty snake-looking thing, too. It's shot by a shotgun. And then we have a giant... Oh, wow, that's actually kind of cool. Look at the boat up right there. I never noticed that before. Giant whale... We have some, I think they said these were uh, enraged or something, or they were like possessed or some crap. One thing I thought was cool was this right here as well. You can see there's a treasure chest, I think, floating in the ocean right there. I have a feeling if that's a treasure chest, this is a ghost ship that protects its treasure, and you have to defeat this basically to take the chest. Super cool how that just mobilizes. Really cool. I love that. And then right here. You see a Pteranodon and a Euteranus with modified feathers on its head. And what seems to be a feathered Triceratops looking type of thing. But it's not a trike because it has multiple horns down here. I'm not really sure what you would classify this creature as. This, however, definitely a Euteranus to some degree. Moving on, the Pteranodon was there. We have a mermaid, which above water, she will drag you in. And this is my favorite part of the trailer, by the way. Punches her in the face and that's it. But don't mess around with the mermaids, obviously. Reminds me of the Mesmer from Subnautica. And this ship was completely custom made to be pink. I did notice the sail seems a little bit glitchy and weird here, but I think that's just because it's a early version of the game. It may also be a homage to That's Cat on Twitter. You can see climbing on the rocks, some kind of city actually on the side of the rock face, which is cool. We have another flying creature down there. And underwater scavenging, shipwrecks. And other things. We have a swordfish right here. Um, a dolphin, I think, right here. This guy is harvesting something from this or trying to break a lock to get into this container. And all in all, seems pretty cool. We have some stuff up right here, too. We got these guys about the dual pistols, but he got the jump on him, so that's that. Then we have the Kraken right here. The Kraken is massive. We actually get to see a little bit of its head. I think this is a mouth. This is an eye. And then it has an alien-type uh, shaped head right here with spikes up right here as well. Um, and then obviously it's tentacles and all the nastiness here that slapped the boat. And this is how Sea of Thieves should have done it. We got a full brigade of ships right here, small and large. And then we have a little raft right here in the background, leaving a giant island as well. Continuing on, there is a fight ensuing between these two ships. This ship's getting the crap kicked out of it, actually. It just doesn't have the firepower to compete. I wonder if a cannon shot does it disable the cannon, too. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, see, they have no cannons right here. And you can see this is a flame turret as well, or a flame cannon, if you want to call it. 
Uh, that's actually kind of cool. It means there's going to be different turret types in the game. That one's getting messed up pretty bad. You need buckets of water. The water looks really good in that bucket as well. They splash it down onto the fire, so on and so forth. And then a cannon almost strikes this guy running past. This person's dead, I think. This person's lighting the cannon. Again, maybe all AI that's interacting here. Giant ship. You got a shark down here. This ship is actually sinking. The anchor was back down there as well. Like, I if this is all AI encounters, it would be super cool to see what PvP would be like. And then PvE would probably be something along the lines of you attacking another AI ship. And that's basically that with the dragons, all the ships. You can have a massive ship too right there. That's probably the biggest one you can make. Absolutely terrifying in scale. Now, this is the part where we get into some weird stuff you might not like. Me personally, it really, really excites me because you can really shape the world of Atlas. Right here, they're going to have dev kit mod support for the ultimate MMO scale warfare. You can have planes imported into Atlas and what excites me the most about this is not going to be the plane or having any of that flying stuff. It's going to be the tank right here. I love this because if you could bring this into a pirate world for large scale battles, this would be absolutely incredible to have. You can also see these guys are on a steampunk ship, which is pretty cool. And that is everything I have for you on Atlas. Guys, leave a like if you did enjoy this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. I wonder if the steampunk guys are going to work on this. Oh, well. I know it was all jumbled together a lot too and like a little bit weird, but uh, it, you know, I, I don't really do the videos like this. So how I'm doing it. Hey guys, leave a like and I will see you in the next video.